The next job we're doing is seeing why this caliper on the front right hand side of the Rover 75 appears to be sticking slightly. And this caliper was brand new last May. It didn't come with guide pins and I did clean them up. But I'm just wondering if they're sticking slightly just with lockdown and lack of use. That is probably why this has happened. So what I'll do is I'll get the wheel off and have a look at the guide pins. I'm 99% certain that the piston will be absolutely fine. So we'll have a look at the guide pins, clean them up, and we'll take it for a test drive later on today. Okay, let's get the, let's take the brake pad air sensor out first, that being the most fragile, get that out the way. Have a look at everything while I'm under here. Everything looks okay. Zen and headlight ballast resistors look okay. Go. That's slightly chafed that. Then it put some tape around that before uh, before I finish. Slightly chafed that. Right, okay. So I don't think we need to take that out. We just need to take the, the guide pins out. Take the dust caps off them. There we go. Don't need an extension for the bottom one. Backing plates are not not in the best of condition, but they're still they're still round. None's hanging off yet, so we'll leave it for now. So one of the reasons I'm investigating the brakes is because a while ago uh, I went to brake and the pedal travelled quite far to the floor, but then not all the way to the floor it did brake, which I thought was strange, and then operation of the pedal then just returned to completely normal. So I thought the piston and the caliper was stuck and then it, that was it coming unstuck. But that's not what's happened at all. I wonder if you can spot what's wrong with these pads. There's the inside pad for reference and there's the outside pad. The friction material has completely disappeared. That is, it is gone. Um, I can't believe I've been driving about like that. Thanks, helicopter. Those blinking things are always flying about my house. I don't know why. Are they after me? I don't know. Anyway, so uh, these pads are toast. Thankfully, a while back, I had the presence of mind to go and buy a set of brake pads. So that's fine. We will just change those now. I'm glad I found that. So what I need to do is I need to get the bonnet of the car up and get a G-clamp to push, undo the reservoir cap and just very gently push that piston back. And unfortunately it now means I've got to do both sides of the car, but I'm off work today, so that's no problem. We'll cut back when we've got a wee bit further on. Right, let's get the G-clamp onto the piston, push it back, because it'll be quite far out just with it. 
There's been no material on those pads at all. Let's see if this clamp will go over it. Just. Only just. I've got to do this very carefully and slowly. Make sure it's in the centre of the piston. Okay, that's good. Can't move these. Us very carefully just move move this back. The caps off the reservoir as well. Very gently. There we go. And we'll move it right back. Very carefully. Very very gently. All the way back. Very far out this piston, very far out. Fluid reservoir isn't overly full. Not spilt out everywhere. I hope not. That should not be good. Take that off. You sit there. Don't move. Right. Right. So. Use the new set of pads for this side. Let's open them up. Oh, what a bit of copper slip in the back. I've cleaned up the pad carriers. But I'm not going to put copper slip on them because I think it just attracts dirt. I think as long as they stay clean. Are okay. So. My brush going there it is. Tiny amount. And then this piston sits. Gloves are clean. Another one. Pop it in here. We'll cut back when this bit is done because this is a bit fiddly. It might swear. Right, that was a right old faff. The, the spring clips to hold the pad inside the piston are far too wide. I had to bend them right in to get even to get it to go in. Now, one thing to remember, take off your inside old pad. There'll be a tiny wee U-shaped clip in here. And you need to save that. Put that in there, because that's where your brake pad wear sensor goes. So don't forget to do that, otherwise you'll get a light on. Let's go ahead and secure the caliper back in position. 
and then we'll get on with the other side. I'm not going to film the other side because it's just a repetition. We'll get the caliper built back up and cut back. I've cleaned up the guide pins as well and we'll just put some red rubber grease on them and fire them back in there. And that's also the clip on now as well to hold the pads in place. Don't forget, once you put these on, don't forget your, your dust caps. Pretty important if you want to have some kind of Allen head left on it. The next time you do your brakes, I've also put a little tiny bit of electrical tape on that chafed wire. It's just when it was getting held in that rubber bracket there. Right, so what we'll do is we'll do the other side now. We'll put the pads on the other side. I pump the brakes, check that it stops okay, and hopefully that should solve our strange braking mystery. Right, so that's that job done. On this side, pedal pump back up, level correct, brakes working fine. Now, unfortunately, and this has happened before, and I did blame my garage for it, but it's actually not their fault. It's really bad for the wheel nuts seizing on. Really bad. Um, I snapped my, my wheel key trying to get them off and I just couldn't, my breaker bar just wasn't long enough. Last time I had to use a, a scaffolding tube. Now I don't have one of those. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can get a hold of one. There was a friend that lent me one the last time. I would really want to keep bothering him. I'd really like to get my own one. So I can get that wheel off. Now, the pads on this side, there's plenty of meat left on them, so I'm not concerned about them in the short term, but they do need changed. Uh, so hopefully I'll find somewhere that I can get just a single scaffolding tube. And I, so I've got one of my own, because I think this is going to happen quite regularly. Anyway, it's still drivable just now. Thankfully it didn't happen on, on that side, the other side, because I, I wouldn't be able to drive the car at all without any friction material on the brake pad, but the ones on the other side are okay.